and good morning everyone. This is Pastor Matt Stokes from Coastal Christian coming to you with the morning meditation. My uh, my host and uh, co-laborer Jesse is in Kensington. He left early this morning to go do some street ministry to the people that are homeless and drug addicted it's amazing please continue to pray for him because um it's never routine i think when you're down there and i i just ask for an extra message extra measure of blessing on everyone that decides to really commit to that ministry which is just huge and uh and never ending uh really i mean uh, when you go down, it seems that for every person that we're reaching, there's uh, another person that's just to find themselves uh, struggling with addiction. But nonetheless, it's what God calls us to do. And uh, Jesse just really feels an extra measure of desire to be obedient to that call. So praise God for that. And uh, so I'll open in prayer and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly pray for him. And uh, we're going to be in, for those of you who have your Bible, and I really hope you do, and I hope that you um, <clears throat> get yourself a nice set of pens and come with me, because that's what this has always been about. It's been almost one year now, our one-year anniversary of morning meditations and, and evening sacrifices. Um, Thanksgiving, I believe, is when I started last year. Uh, can't believe, I don't know if we do the math, Monday through Friday, how many times with the exception, I think, of my surgeries and a few other things, uh, how many time, how many books we've been through, how many chapters, how many studies has been really amazing. Um, and a blessing to see all of you coming on in this little community of us who study the scriptures early in the morning. I'm always amazed how long we go, and then I'm also amazed at uh, how many of you stay. Um, today's gonna be a little shorter. I'm feeling a little under the weather. So my throat is kind of sore. I don't know if I'm sick or I might just be a little worn down. You know how that happens? Your resistance is down. And so um, I'm going to try to save my voice and just uh, do a lot of reading today. I have a couple meetings in the afternoon, so I also want to save myself so I can uh, put my thoughts out on the table for the meeting and um, not get, uh, you know, nurse this throat. I have an awesome, by the way, if anybody is wants to know, this stuff is like magic. Vapocol, uh, you know, chloroseptic and chorocedin. I mean, I've been through them all. Nothing helps like this stuff right here. Today's uh, Bible study is brought to you by Vicks Vapocol Sore Throat cooling and numbing uh winter frost i mean if anything i would be careful because i took a couple shots of it and then tried to take a drink of water and i almost choked because my throat was so numb it didn't know the water didn't know where to go and like that's how numb it got back there i was like coughing on the water but i was like wow man this stuff is really helpful so if you have a sore throat that works okay hey let's pray and uh, we'll get into this next section in Psalm 119. Most of us know Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. It's 176 verses. And sometimes I like to come back to this and get to a psalm just because of the passion and the pleas that's from day, the pleas that come, P-L-E-A, the plea or pleas that come from David's heart. And uh, so we're going to do a little bit here and maybe we'll revisit it again tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> God, as we come before your word right now this morning, we just pray that you would speak to us again. You have so much to say. In fact, when we enter into eternity, you'll never stop sharing with us the infinite nature and essence and facets of your character. We will constantly be blown away by just who you are. Um, but we're not gonna wait till that day. We wanna begin now to really love you and appreciate you and be strengthened in our confidence in who, who you are to us. So speak to us through your word, protect Jesse and all those that are trying to minister um, the gospel to people that may be 
broken and at the same time violent or rejecting, Lord, I just pray that you would just um, superintend that moment. Come upon them with your Holy Spirit and let miracles happen in Jesus' name. And I pray nothing less than the miracle of your enlightenment as we study your word. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So as we're looking at these portions, they all really, most of you know, in Psalm 119, you would be hard pressed to find a particular verse that isn't referring to God's word. Almost every verse refers to God's word in a particular way. Statutes, precepts, commandments, testimonies, judgments, uh, all, the word word just by itself. I mean, it's amazing to see how many words he uses to explain your covenants, right? So that's what's going to happen as we look through and we see him talk about his law. And let's see what he says here, because there are some particulars in here that I think might be really special to some of us. So in verse 57, he says, thou art my portion, O Lord, I have said that I would keep thy words. So here's what's so precious about that. He calls the Lord. Let me see if I have my pens are going on me a little bit, but I'm good, everybody. I'm good on pens. Um, my portion. This is a really particular word that uh, for a lot of my Christian life, I didn't really understand the meaning of it. Your portion, you know, thou art my portion. What is the portion? Well, the portion is this, um, and let this really be a blessing to you, that in ancient times, there was a portion that was divided under each family member when the father would die, just like you would get in a will. And each child would get a portion. And most of us know in ancient times that many, many people had many children, right? It wasn't like today where you have one or two kids. I mean, you know, there's 12 tribes of Israel and each tribe received a portion. Here's what's really interesting. Actually, one didn't. The tribe of Levi did not receive a portion of the land when they entered into Canaan, right? And the reason was is because they were punished um, at one particular time because of something that they did. All right, they ended up starting a war. It's a long story that's not worth getting into right now. But when Moses came down from the mountain and everyone was involved in sensuality and idolatry, Moses said, who is on the Lord's side? Come and stand with me. And it says the tribe of Levi was the first to rise up and stand with Moses for the side of righteousness. And because of that, when God decided that he was going to tell Abraham how the portions were going to be divided to the 12 tribes of Israel, he said to the tribe of Levi, because you redeemed yourself by standing up for righteousness in the way that you did, I'm not going to give you a portion in the land, you know, but you, my, I will be your portion, the Lord says, I will be your portion. Is that amazing? I'm not going to give you a piece of land. You're not going to get South Jersey. You're not going to get Atlantic County. You're not going to get Bergen County as your piece of land when you enter into the promised land of New Jersey, whatever. Your portion is going to be me. I'm going to be your portion. How wonderful is that for the Levites to hear that the Lord was going to be their portion? And you know what happened to the Levites, right? Um the Levites ended up being the ones that took care of the tabernacle and the temple. And so since they didn't have a particular place of land to settle in, they went wherever the tabernacle went and they cared for and ministered to the people by the means of taking care of the tabernacle. I see a, a note here that the video is freezing up and I am so sorry about that. I don't know what to do about that. Please keep letting me know though if it does. My wife is working from home today online and she might be taking up a certain amount of bandwidth as she's working in her office downstairs. But let me know because if that's the case, I want to try to keep working on that. So the other thing I want to tell you is, is like, imagine this, everybody listening, that the Lord is your portion. Like in this life, no matter what your inheritance is, I don't know if you have a Maserati, and I don't know if you have a McMansion, I don't know if you have a, 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 a huge 401k pension, uh, but the Lord is your portion. He is your portion. And what's beautiful is, is imagine if someone told me that I had a portion of land and it was in the Caribbean. Well, that'd be so great. But guess what? I've got to get 
get on a plane and I've got to travel to get to my portion and go enjoy my portion. But when the Lord is my portion and the Holy Spirit dwells within me, I mean, how cool is that? That I don't have to go anywhere except for just to get to God in prayer and I can experience my Savior and my portion because that's who He is. Like, let that blow your mind, right? God is my inheritance. God is my inheritance. Right? Like that ought to be just an amazing thought. Oh, Lord. And he says, I have said that I would keep thy words. Because God is my portion, what I really want to do is I have this overwhelming desire now to actually want to keep what it is that God has told me to say. So knowing that the Lord is my portion, watch what happens. That blessing of the Lord being my portion, that blessing equals obedience. O-B-E-D-I-E-N-C-E. Do you see that? When I realize just the weight of what it means to be blessed with the presence of the Holy Spirit within me, that Christ died on the cross for me, that heaven is the home for me, that eternity dwells within me now and forever, what's happening is, is my longing now is going to be to obey the one who has blessed me with such an awesome portion as himself. <clears throat> How wonderful is that? I mean, that alone is worthy of a morning meditation. Maybe to even go through the scriptures and see how many times it talks about how the Lord is your portion. Or do that study and find out how the Levites lost their portion, but because they were obedient to the Lord, they regained their portion. And not only that, their portion was themselves. And yeah, Isabella, that's like God's math right there, right? Blessing equals obedience. I wish it was always, right? Unfortunately, wouldn't you agree that there's times where God does bless us, and unfortunately, even in the ways that he's blessed us, it has an equal to obedience. Sometimes God can bless somebody with finances, and yet that person is still greedy. Or sometimes God can bless somebody with the great power to be a powerful speaker, and they take the glory to themselves, and they try to amass to themselves great attendance. Uh, um, in their in their worship centers, and you know, um, great you know riches in terms of the, their church uh, facilities, and they really didn't turn it all back over to the glory of God, and that's the danger, you know, that all of us face is to make sure that we beware that when God blesses us, that we give the glory back to Him, we give the honor back to Him, and the way we do that is we yield to Him, we submit to Him. We obey him, right? Obedience to the to the call of Christ on our lives. Obedience to the word of the Lord. Obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll, <clears throat> let's go one more verse and then that, that hopefully that'll be a lot for us to just absorb this morning. <clears throat> I entreated thy favor with my whole heart be merciful unto me according to thy word. So do you see that? How, you know, look again, he uses the word word here, but then he uses the word word again. This is what I'm saying. Psalm 119 is a really huge celebration of the word. So he entreated thy favor. I just happen to know, guys, that that word favor in the original language is actually the word I don't know how's this pen going to do this. Is actually the word face. See, back in ancient times, when you appear before the king, you always hoped that the king would have favor on you. And if the king had favor on you, you lived. But if the king didn't have favor on you, you could die right there in his courts and be drug out and killed. So there was hope for you as a peasant when you appeared before the king. You would say, oh, great king, have favor on me. And what would happen is, is the king would decide if he was going to lift his face 
and look at you. And if he did, that means he found favor with you. If he looked away to one of his servants or he put his thumb down, then he didn't have favor on you. And, you know, maybe you've seen some scenes like that in some movies that portray the ancient times. But the idea of he entreated, he called upon the Lord, he's begging. This is a powerful word entreated it means that he he sought wholeheartedly after the lord right um and uh, for his face and you, you'll see you know in the scriptures when it says lift up thy f may the lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace because that was a big deal for someone in royalty somebody who was um, you know, in the context of majesty to actually let their face look upon you favorably. And so he's calling out to the Lord God, maker of heaven and earth. And he's saying, would you please have favor upon me? I entreated your face. I wanted your face to look favorably upon me. So there's two words here that I want you guys to notice that are very powerful. One word is the word entreated. Okay. And the other one is my whole heart. And I just want to ask, because this is just a morning meditation. We're not going real deep into these, but this is a question that was worth meditation is how often do we really entreat the Lord? Like we're really seeking after him, like we're running hard after him. You know, we're not hastening. We, we're, we're quickly responding to go after him and we're rising up early in the morning to seek him. We're staying up late to call upon his name. We're like, we're entreating him and saying, Lord, I'm coming coming to you with my whole heart. I mean, how many times do we come to the Lord with half a heart? I see a comment. I love how you always, oh, I think I admit, I love how you always bring the language back to the original language and then to what the culture and customs, okay, good. Um, so bless you, allow us to stay. Uh, well, I'm so glad that you guys uh, appreciate that, right? So thank you, Tracy. And send me send me a note and let me know how you're doing today because I do pray for you, along with our whole staff prayed for you yesterday and your family because we love you guys. And I know you haven't been feeling so well. You did a lot of traveling with the pageants and all, and then you guys look like you looks like, from our perspective, so you guys just crash, you know. Um, whole heart, you know. Let's seek the Lord with our whole heart. I don't want to be a half-hearted seeker of the Lord. I want to be a whole-hearted seeker. Like, right? I don't want my, I don't want my, you ever see like, I don't know. I don't want to be judgmental, but you know, you can, you can, I know when I'm worshiping with my whole heart and I know when my worship is half-hearted. And I want to be careful when I say that because I know when my hands are raised as high as they can to the sky and I am like, Lord Jesus, I am crying out to you. And then there's other times where like my hands, like one hand's in my pocket and my other hand's holding my Bible. And like, I know that I have to speak in a few minutes and my mind is on the message, which isn't wrong. But I'm just saying my whole heart isn't in the words, what a beautiful name it is, what a powerful name he is, what, what a wonderful name he is. Like, that's not where I am, you know, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Like, I'm not really saying that. My mind's somewhere else. I want to be 100% wholehearted as I'm, as, as I'm seeking God, calling out to God, crying out to God today. What if I just lived a day wholehearted in the presence of the Lord, right? And then uh, man, we could we could just talk about that all morning. What it means to be wholehearted, right? Like when you were in love, you were wholehearted towards that person you loved, right? You couldn't wait for that phone call. You didn't want that dinner to end when you guys went out on a date or whatever it was. You know, Shakespeare was like parting is such sweet sorrow, and we all kind of like chuckle at that little line from Shakespeare because we know it because it's like it's such a beautiful moment because. Um, you don't want to leave the person, but you're recognizing how much you love the person when you have to leave the person. It's like, that's wholehearted, man. It's like, I don't want to leave prayer, God, because I have to go back into the rest of my day. But I love you so much. I just want to stay here. 
right? Like Peter, when he said, can we just build three booths right here and just stay here while you're transfigured in all of your glory on this mountain? Like he was wholehearted in that moment, right? And so I'm saying, that's how I want to live. And I think that's how many of us want to live. How do we get to a place where we are wholehearted? Well, one is we constantly spend our time trying to get into the face of God, seeking his face. And Psalm, is it 27, says, when thou didst say, seek my face, thy face, O Lord, did I seek. And I'm telling you, every day, God wants us to be seeking his face. Jesus is saying, come unto me if you're weary and heavy laden. Come unto me if you're thirsty. Come unto me if you're hungry, right? He wants you to continue to come unto him. He's calling out to us. And we need to be responding to that wholeheartedly. Linda says, my fear is sometimes makes me want to depend on myself. But as you reinforce here, he is our portion and I must depend on him. Yeah, right. And I think that's a natural tendency, you know, Linda, in all our hearts is that, you know, confusion between where, you know, uh, that or confliction, if you will, between where, you know, my responsibility uh, and, you know, we can call it fear, but there are some things we have. I mean, you have to depend on yourself and you have to go get your groceries and you have to pay your bills. I mean, like there's certain parts to life that are just so real and there that's reality. But how do we have a wholehearted um, context it, like in, in our lives surrounding us as we have to do some of those things that are our daily concerns, uh, um, our, our daily preoccupations. I think that's where God wants us to be. And that's what it looks like to be in the spirit, you know. So um, maybe we'll stop there. I'll, I'll finish that last phrase. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. What's really interesting about that, I, I, I entreated the Lord. I'm seeking after him to see his face and find his favor with my whole heart. And then he says, be merciful unto me according to thy word. Your, your Bible might say gracious because those words are similar. But the idea is, is that mercy and grace, you know, we don't take them for granted. In David's day, God's mercy and God's grace was not promised this way it is today day by the way the Holy Spirit indwells us and Ephesians tells us that we've received every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ so it's so the idea is is your word and this is what this is what the believer can rely on today that God's word talks about how merciful he is so let me just according to thy word because you said it you know how we say that to a king as we bow to him yes yes your majesty according to thy word like because you said it i believe it and your word says that you are merciful and because your word says that you're merciful i'm crying out to you to be faithful to the promise that you made to me according to your word so why is that important because today we can totally go into this day seeking the Lord, knowing that he is our portion, that he is our inheritance, and we can keep his word and the blessings can lead to obedience. And we can cry out to him and seek him, seek his face with our whole hearts. And we know in the midst of it all, we're going to find mercy and grace because he's promised us all the mercy and all the grace that we need for today and into eternity because we have as believers the Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you guys for joining me this morning for this short time in the morning meditation. Maybe it wasn't so short. I don't know. Sometimes time flies, but I want, I appreciate you guys. Let me try to save my voice today so that maybe I'm sorry if I lost some of you guys. I got a phone call coming in. Um, I'm going to say goodbye and please don't forget to share this. And when it comes to, and when it comes to Sunday morning at Dawes Avenue, please, can someone put that into the correspondence, put a clip, put a link, you know, W you have to use www dot www.coastalchristianoceancity. If somebody can type that in, that would just be great. And anybody who's meeting with us um, or watching this can type that in and they can see 
uh, where we meet. They can watch old messages, and hopefully we're going to continue to teach God's Word. We're going to worship in spirit and truth. We're going to love one another, and in the midst of that, we're going to watch God work. So please, um, I want to encourage all of you that call yourselves Coastal Christians to continue to be those that are reaching out into your community there. Elaine, thank you so much for that. Hopefully it sends up a little um, link for everybody to check in. And there are a lot of people that are meeting us because they saw the sign out on the streets in Summers Point or because they've watched some of these morning meditations that you shared. It's remarkable. So please, I want to encourage you, keep it going. And um, um, if we can be back, it seems like evening prayer is just becoming really difficult because there's just so many ministries at the end. Jesse and I are trying to visit other home fellowships, uh, ministering to, man, so many people right now that is taking us into the later hours of the day, uh, the need to try to be with family. But we are sticking with the morning meditation, and that's working quite well. So we'll see what God does tonight um, when everyone's back home here. And if nothing else, uh, tomorrow morning we should be back at 8.15. We'll either take a little longer trip into this. Maybe Jesse will share with us. But please do consider who God might have you bring with you to meet us at Dolls Avenue at Coastal Christian as we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you there.